It is possible to safely and comfortably manage small pupils even without pupil dilating devices if you follow some basic principles. Now you will all agree with me that the size of the pupil in this case is just about 2 millimeters. There's a comfortable grade 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract. The iris is not floppy. I construct the clear corneal incision with due care, with adequate length and maintaining the corneal valve because this will prevent iris prolapse that can occur in small pupils anyway, even if it is not a floppy iris. The capsular rexis is made by making it closely hug the pupil and sometimes carrying it just beyond the pupillary edge in order to give me a slightly larger size of capsular rexis than the pupil itself. It's very important to carry out proper hydro dissection. A cortical cleavage hydro dissection should be impeccable because a failure of this nucleus to rotate can land you in a lot of trouble later on in the procedure. So a proper cortical cleavage hydro dissection is being performed. I rock the nucleus to make sure that it will rotate and I'm managing this case by a direct phaco chop. The advantage being that all the steps of the direct phaco chop maneuver can be carried out within the pupillary area itself. There is no need to carry the instruments beyond the pupillary edge and blindly fish in the periphery. So after burying the phaco tip, I'm initiating the crack and separating the nucleus fragments comfortably. And at all times, my instruments are in the visible zone and can clearly see what is happening throughout the procedure. Now during the procedure, because of the contact of the nuclear fragments to the iris surface, there is a slight pupillary shutdown. But if you keep the phaco probe in the center of the pupil, and if you pay proper attention to creating the crack, then things will happen in a predictable and in a safe manner. So using vacuum, I'm impaling the fragments, I'm bringing it out into the safe zone within the pupillary area. I'm using low flow parameters. My vacuum in this case is only 280 millimeters of mercury as against 350 millimeters of mercury. And my flow rate is also only 28 cc per minute. I normally keep a flow rate of 35 cc per minute. Using a micro pulse mode of echo emulsification, with these low parameters, I'm able to successfully continue with phaco emulsification, impaling the nucleus, breaking it out into smaller fragments mobilizing these fragments, bringing it into the safe zone and carefully and cautiously emulsifying it in the safe zone at the level of the iris plane itself. As long as you're confident of your skills in handling the cases, as long as you are aware of the depth and the distance which your skills have taught you, which you have learned over several years of practice and experience, managing these small pupils will not be such a difficult proposition. So in a slow and controlled manner in this unedited video of the nucleus management, you can see how I'm slowly able to emulsify the entire grade 2 nuclear sclerotic cataract. Now the reason why I would not attempt this procedure in a soft cataract or in a rock hard cataract is because it's very difficult to break it down into smaller fragments in soft cataract. In hard cataract we need to break the pieces down to very small fragments because the capsular rexes also will be small, the nucleus will be large and mobilization of the pieces will be difficult. 
The epinucleus sheet is simply managed by using a Sinsky hook to lift it up to the iris plane and then it is simply aspirated and that's the end of the procedure. There was no iris chaffing, the iris did not get sucked into the phaco probe. I did not fish with the phaco probe in the periphery. Now irrigation aspiration can be done by moving it to the periphery. After retracting the iris and observing where the cortex is, you can aspirate it. Sometimes in these small pupils, you can have small nuclear fragments that are hidden from view. And during this procedure, they will pop up and all you have to do is to smash them against the coaxial IA aspiration port and remove them. Now carrying a IA tip to the periphery is not dangerous as long as you keep the aspiration port facing upwards. You retract the iris, you spot the cortex, you take the IA probe, you initiate a slight amount of vacuum in order to grasp the cortex, bring it to the safe zone and then increase the vacuum to aspirate it. The subincisional cortex is also managed by simply rotating the wrist, making the aspiration port face laterally, that is in the direction of the equator of the bag. You can grasp the cortex with low vacuum and once the cortex is grasped, you can rotate the IA probe in such a manner that the aspiration port now starts facing upwards and then increase the vacuum further in order to aspirate the cortex. So all the cortex has been aspirated, the nucleus management has been successfully completed. And while insufflating the viscoelastic in the eye, please put the viscoelastic above the iris. Do not put it underneath the iris as this may cause iris prolapse to happen. The hydrophilic acrylic lens is injected into the bag and by using a simple posterior push maneuver, you can get it into the bag most of the times. So in this case, I'm confirming the in the bag location of the intraocular lens by performing a pivot rotation. Remember that it will not be possible to pivot an intraocular lens if it is partially in the sulcus and partially in the bag or completely in the sulcus. Only an in the bag lens can be pivot rotated. At the end of the procedure, stromal hydration is performed and this small pupil, or rather this extremely small pupil, has been successfully managed. I thank you for your attention.